All right, guys, how's it going? Cal Zane back with another video, and today we're going to be looking at things on the game side of stuff. And I got a special game review for you guys. And I know this is a few months late, but we're going to be reviewing Final Fantasy 15. Now, this is a title that I very much enjoyed. I spent a lot of time playing it. And I actually, when I ran through it, I played through the whole game pretty much straight over the first launch weekend. So, it's just that engaging of a game. So, by no means is it a perfect title, and there are a lot of things I don't think were handled quite right, and we will go over those in this video. But to start things off, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys my overall review, and I think that... If you enjoy action RPGs and you definitely like a lot of Square Enix's work, go pick this game up. And if you've never really been big into those type of games, go ahead and give it a try. It is a really good game. It's got a really good battle mechanic system. It's got a lot of different adventure side quest type things you can do. And it's got some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in any game, period. So, we're going to jump right into it. And I'm going to rate the way I do these reviews... And I'll give you a total score at the end. The way I do them is I gauge it on graphics, smoothness of gameplay, or uh, story, um, minor details, which is stuff like, you know, frame rate consistency and some of the some of the minor dialogue details, some of that kind of stuff. Maybe some of the customization options, and then. I go with the overall pace of the game and length. So for me, I'm one of those people that when I buy an action RPG, I want to be able to spend tons of hours in it because I spend $60 on the game. It it says it's an open world game and it's got hours of content. So when I play games like that, I expect that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and start off with the very first one. We'll go with graphics. In graphics, this is a very, very visually appealing game. Although, if you're buying a PS4 Pro for the 4K support, I don't even recommend playing it on 4K. There's not much of a visual difference. And the 60 frames per second option is just a much better option if you want a better playing experience. The 4K version, I actually feel, runs worse than the PS4, standard PS4's uh, 1080p version. Which, we'll talk about that when we get to the frame rate section, but there's a reason why I, that's not necessarily the best option either. So if you're playing this, you're going to get the best playing experience if you're playing it on the PlayStation 4 Pro at 1080p with 60 frames per second, which would be the light option. And if you get an HDR compatible TV, I don't really notice that much of a difference with the HDR, but maybe you will. So it's there as an option. So, on the graphics end, I don't think it can... I think it... What do you think it is? Personally, I think some of the stuff we've seen from the the gameplay trailers and stuff they leased, or released actually looked better. But I, I have a 55-inch Samsung TV that I play my games on. And I've noticed that even some of the best-looking games still have some weird visual stuff that I don't pick up when I watch the gameplay videos on my phone or on my tablet. So, that could be something with maybe just the size of the screen, I don't know. But I think visually and graphics-wise, I think it was excellent, but I don't think it quite matched up with the gameplay trailers we've seen from Versus 13 and early stages of Final Fantasy 15, as well as some other games that are out right now. So... For graphics, I'll go ahead and give it an 8.5 out of 10. They were still really, it still had really good visuals. And you're not, it's not by any means a bad looking game. And the scenery and stuff is beautiful. I will say that there is a massive difference in in the level of detail and how how the grass and stuff refreshes and stuff on the PS4 Pro version. So I do definitely recommend if you got a PS4 and you haven't upgraded to the PS4 Pro. I've had mine for a while. I really like it. And it seems like almost all my games consistently run maybe a little bit smoother. And there are some better options there when it comes to smoothness for games that are in the PS4 Pro patches. So go ahead and think that over if you're if you're on the fence about upgrading. But that'll do it on the graphics side. So now we're going to get into the gameplay side of it and some of the smoothness. And this game had a really, really good battle mechanic system. I highly enjoyed it. But until they released the PS4 Pro patch for 60 frames per second, the gameplay was very wonky and I noticed a lot of frame rate dips and just kind of glitchy stuff happening. 
So that was that was one of my major complaints playing through it, and I'm one of those people that I play on consoles because it's not I I don't need the best visuals. I know you can get better visuals on and graphics on PC, but I play on console because I like the smoothness and ease of the experience, and that felt a little bit lost with this. It felt kind of kind of stumbly, and I just the the smoothness until they released that patch was kind of a big issue for me. So I'm going to go ahead and on the smoothness and just gameplay aspect of it, I'm still going to give it an 8.5 out of 10 just for the fact that the combat was engaging enough to kind of work past some of that some of that smoothness issues. But if you're a person that's really picky about that, I think you'll be a little disappointed in this, especially after the 10-year development time the game had and stuff like that. So, so far you get 8 out of, or 8.5 out of 10s. So now we're going to go to story, and this is this is the hardest part for me to rate because the story is so deeply engaging. It is a phenomenal story, and it has a great tone to it. The problem is they cut so much out, or at least left so many gaps in the story that it kind of felt lacking for me, and this wasn't something that I really felt that strongly about until I realized, until I watched like Final Fantasy Peasants videos and some of these other ones, I talked about how much was actually removed from the game, and that kind of stuff, finding out what the potential really was for the game and then seeing what we got, it makes it feel like a bit of a letdown. But if you're not that interested, if you didn't follow it all the way since it's been Versus 13, or minor uh, inconsistencies in the story don't really bother you that much, like you're not a deep lore fan, you're probably going to be alright playing this game. For people that really like diving deep into the lore of a game and really following an ex a, a very extensive story, you're going you're gonna to feel a little left out on this title. So, but as as some of the DLC content has come out, they have actually added more to it to kind of fix some of that. So, I'm still on the story aspect. I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8 out of 10. It is great. It has a great story. It's got a great cast of characters. But there's a lot of potential that was really missed with this game in the story aspect. And the biggest problem I have is I played through it in like... I think it was 32 hours, and I actually had a day there where I left for about four hours and accidentally left my PS4 on running the game. So really, for a Final Fantasy title, this game, for a story narrative standpoint, was really, really short, and that was very disappointing to me. <coughs> Final Fantasy is one of those... One of those titles that it always has a really deep, really long, engaging story, so it was a little bit... I was a little sad to see it at that point. I think that's got a lot to do with the fact that the game companies nowadays have gotten used to making 10 or 15 hour games because they add tons of multiplayer and customization and stuff like that. And that's not what I'm looking for when I look at a Final Fantasy game. So we're going to go ahead and move on here to one of the last, last segments here. And this is going to be my the the tone of the open world and it suffers from a lot of the same problem a lot of open world games do and that is you have a whole lot of space to cover and not a whole lot to do and a lot of the side quests seem very repetitive and actually i found them to be very boring i did them anyway for a nice grind so i could grind my levels out but the side quests are nothing to jump for joy over for the most part so when it comes to Final Fantasy or a game like that, you got to take into consideration, do you want to focus more on the story or do you want to focus more on appealing to a certain Sounds type of audience? And that certain passage. type of audience that this Let game appealed to is not your core Final Fantasy audience. Long and if you want to hear more right on that side, because I'm not going to go real in-depth in that, but go ahead and check out Final Fantasy's Peasants videos. Wherever I'll leave a link in the description. He's Watch got tons and tons and tons of of content where he's ran and invented about this subject and why I do, I do agree that it doesn't fit for Final Fantasy 15. But for the open world, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. Visually, it's very appealing. And 
it is an immersive open world it does have a very realistic feel to it and it's nice to look at but as far as engaging it's re i really don't think it's that engaging on an open world aspect and i don't think the final fantasy was ever intended to be an open world rpg kind of like dragon age or anything like that or skyrim so that's gonna do it on that so for my overall review i'm gonna go ahead and give this game because I don't know what the average is for that exactly. But I, I I do think it was a very a very good title. I do think that a lot of people are going to find a lot of enjoyment with it. And I think that overall, if you go out and spend the money on this, you're not hey, going to be disappointed. Although I would highly recommend getting the season of pass. Because I think it's all just which may more worth it. The of the keep. Does but... Overall, I think that this game, I don't really know. I don't really know how to describe this one to you guys. I mean, I'm trying to come up with the words for it right now, and I know there was a little bit of a pause there, but it's, it's a great experience, but it's not the Final Fantasy experience. Wait, so if you're something. looking for a Final you Fantasy title, you're probably going to be a little, little left out on this. I mean, it's it's good. It's it's great well, if it's look. the theme of a well, lot of other Final Fantasies, but it's just so dramatically different. And, and it's so lacking in some of the things that are classic to Final Fantasy. I'm going to go ahead and give this game an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. Is it perfect? No. Is it great? What? Yes. Do I think it'll be a classic? No. Not by any means. I do think what? that it will be a longtime fan goodness. favorite, and I think it'll be kind of an underground following favorite, kind of like Final Fantasy IX, which I think deserved way more recognition than it got. So this is going to wrap up this review. I am going to be playing through episode Gladiolus. I'm downloading it right now, so as soon as I get that downloaded and stuff, I'll try and get that played through, and I'll give you guys a review for that. Uh, I did play through, and there's some of the some of it in this video, but I did play through the part of Chapter 13 with Gladiolus and Ignis, and I think that that was I think that was executed very well, and I did like Gladiolus's playstyle, so I have a lot of high expectations for episode Gladiolus. But as far as the story aspect goes, don't let that get you down because they are adding a ton of new story content in these in these DLC packs to kind of smooth out some of that. So if that's the part that's gets you hung up, go ahead and pick the game up and just give Square Enix a little bit of time to balance that out. So, all right, guys, this is going to wrap this one up. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button below. If you know anyone that's interested in this kind of content and really likes Final Fantasy, go ahead and share that around. Go check out um, Final Fantasy Peasants channel, and if you if you want more in depth on Final Fantasy 15 and all it has to offer, uh, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the content I put on this channel because I try to do daily content. And if you feel like helping out with this with this project I'm doing with this channel. And helping Spare with, me, you know, because like I got a lot of equipment costs and things like that. And I want to be able to run this full time. If you guys want to help out, go ahead and head over to Patreon. You're not by any means obligated. But anyone that does um, donate on Patreon will have their name featured in one of my videos for right now. And I will come up with some more kind of... Um, some more reward tier type things later on down the road for you guys. But I appreciate everyone's support. You guys are doing awesome. I, uh, go ahead and check out my Facebook um, fan page. It's Calzane Gaming and Tech on looked? Facebook. And no. follow me on Twitter at General Calzane. And if you want to find me on PlayStation, go ahead and look me up on either uh, Calzane Gaming Tech in that order. For the name or for my screen name general nude with the three at the end and they'll both be all that information will be in the outro at the very end of the video i hope you guys enjoy this let me know your thoughts on final fantasy 15 tell me if you think i'm off base or if you agree with me all right guys until next time i'll catch you all later